Mexico, Wikipedia article audio. Coordinates, 23 degrees north 102 degrees west. Slash, 23 degrees north 102 degrees west. Slash 23, 102. Etymology. History. Pre-Columbian Mexico. Post-Classic Period Conquest of the Aztec Triple Alliance Viceroyalty of New Spain War of Independence First Empire and First Republic Second Republic and Second Empire Porfirio. Mexican Revolution and One-Party Rule One-Party Rule Contemporary Mexico Geography Climate Biodiversity Government and politics Government Politics Law enforcement Crime Foreign relations Military Administrative divisions Economy Communications Mexico, officially the United Mexican States, is a federal republic in the southern portion of North America. It is bordered to the north by the United States, to the south and west by the Pacific Ocean, to the southeast by Guatemala, Belize and the Caribbean Sea, and to the east by the Gulf of Mexico. Covering almost 2 million square kilometers, the nation is the fifth largest country in the Americas by total area and the 13th largest independent state in the world. Energy Science and Technology With an estimated population of over 120 million, the country is the 11th most populous and the most populous Spanish-speaking state in the world while being the second most populous nation in Latin America. Mexico is a federation comprising 31 states and a special federal entity that is also its capital and most populous city. Other metropolises include Guadalajara, Leon, Monterrey, Puebla, Toluca, and Tijuana. Tourism Transportation Pre-Columbian Mexico dates to approximately 8000 BC, is identified as one of seven cradles of civilization and was home to many advanced Mesoamerican civilizations, such as the Olmec, Toltec, Teotihuacan, Zapotec, Maya, and Aztec before first contact with Europeans. In 1521, the Spanish Empire conquered and colonized the territory from its politically powerful base in Mexico Tenochtitlan, which was administered as the Viceroyalty of New Spain. Three centuries later, the territory became the current nation following recognition in 1821 after the colony's Mexican War of Independence. The tumultuous post-independence period was characterized by economic inequality and many political deep changes. The Mexican-American War led to a territorial cession of the extensive Northern Territories to the United States. The Pastry War, the Franco-Mexican War, a civil war, two empires, and a domestic dictatorship occurred through the 19th century. The dictatorship was overthrown in the Mexican Revolution of 1910, which culminated with the promulgation of the 1917 Constitution and the emergence of the country's current political system. Mexico has the 15th largest nominal GDP and the 11th largest by purchasing power parity. The Mexican economy is strongly linked to those of its North American Free Trade Agreement partners especially the United States. Mexico was the first Latin American member of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, joining in 1994. 
It is classified as an upper middle income country by the World Bank and a newly industrialized country by several analysts. By 2050, Mexico could become the world's fifth or seventh largest economy. The country is considered both a regional power and middle power, and is often identified as an emerging global power. Due to its rich culture and history, Mexico ranks first in the Americas and seventh in the world by number of UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Mexico is a megadiverse country, ranking fourth in the world by biodiversity. In 2016 it was the eighth most visited country in the world, with 35 million international arrivals. Mexico is a member of the United Nations, the World Trade Organization, the G8 plus 5, the G20, the Uniting for Consensus and the Pacific Alliance. Mexico is the Nahuatl term for the heartland of the Aztec Empire, namely, the Valley of Mexico, and its people, the Mexica, and surrounding territories. This became the future state of Mexico as a division of New Spain prior to independence. It is generally considered to be a toponym for the valley which became the primary ethnonym for the Aztec Triple Alliance as a result, or vice versa. After New Spain won independence from Spain, representatives decided to name the new country after its capital, Mexico City. This was founded in 1524 on top of the ancient Mexica capital of Mexico Tenochtitlan. Traditionally, the name Tenochtitlan was thought to come from Nahuatl Tate and Noctli and is often thought to mean among the prickly pears rocks. However, one attestation in the late 16th century manuscript known as the Bancroft Dialogues suggests the second vowel was short, so that the true etymology remains uncertain. The suffix co is the Nahuatl locative making the word a place name. Beyond that, the etymology is uncertain. It has been suggested that it is derived from Mixtli or Mexitli, a secret name for the god of war and patron of the Mexica, Hutzilopochtli, in which case Mexico means place where Hutzilopochtli lives. Another hypothesis suggests that Mexico derives from a portmanteau of the Nahuatl words for moon and navel. This meaning might refer to Tenochtitlan's position in the middle of Lake Texcoco. The system of interconnected lakes, of which Texcoco formed the center, had the form of a rabbit, which the Mesoamericans paradoxically associated with the moon. Still another hypothesis suggests that the word is derived from Mechtli, the goddess of Magway. The name of the city-state was transliterated to Spanish as Mexico with the phonetic value of the letter X in medieval Spanish, which represented the voiceless post-alveolar fricative. This sound, as well as the voiced post-alveolar fricative, represented by AJ, evolved into a voiceless velar fricative during the 16th century. This led to the use of the variant Mexico in many publications in Spanish, most notably in Spain, whereas in Mexico and most other Spanish-speaking countries Mexico was the preferred spelling. In recent years the Real Academia Española, which regulates the Spanish language, determined that both variants are acceptable in Spanish but that the normative recommended spelling is Mexico. The majority of publications in all Spanish-speaking countries now adhere to the new norm, even though the alternative variant is still occasionally used. In English, the X in Mexico represents neither the original nor the current sound, but the consonant cluster. The official name of the country has changed as the form of government has changed. The Declaration of Independence signed on November 6, 1813 by the deputies of the Congress of Anahuac called the Territory America Septentrional. On two occasions, the country was known as Imperio Mexicano. 
All three federal constitutions used the name Estados Unidos Mexicanos or the variant Estados Unidos Mexicanos, all of which have been translated as United Mexican States. The phrase República Mexicana, Mexican Republic, was used in the 1836 constitutional laws. The earliest human artifacts in Mexico are chips of stone tools found near campfire remains in the Valley of Mexico and radiocarbon dated to circa 10,000 years ago. Mexico is the site of the domestication of maize, tomato, and beans, which produced an agricultural surplus. This enabled the transition from Palea Indian hunter-gatherers to sedentary agricultural villages beginning around 5000 BC. In the subsequent formative eras, maize cultivation and cultural traits such as a mythological and religious complex, and a vigesimal numeric system, were diffused from the Mexican cultures to the rest of the Mesoamerican culture area. In this period, villages became more dense in terms of population, becoming socially stratified with an artisan class, and developing into chiefdoms. The most powerful rulers had religious and political power, organizing construction of large ceremonial centers developed. The earliest complex civilization in Mexico was the Almec culture which flourished on the Gulf Coast from around 1500 BC. Almec cultural traits diffused through Mexico into other formative era cultures in Chiapas, Oaxaca, and the Valley of Mexico. The formative period saw the spread of distinct religious and symbolic traditions, as well as artistic and architectural complexes. The formative era of Mesoamerica is considered one of the six independent cradles of civilization. In the subsequent pre-classical period, the Maya and Zapotec civilizations developed complex centers at Calakmul and Monte Alban, respectively. During this period the first true Mesoamerican writing systems were developed in the AP Almec and the Zapotec cultures. The Mesoamerican writing tradition reached its height in the classic Maya hieroglyphic script. In central Mexico, the height of the classic period saw the ascendancy of Teotihuacan, which formed a military and commercial empire whose political influence stretched south into the Maya area as well as north. Teotihuacan, with a population of more than 150,000 people, had some of the largest pyramidal structures in the pre-Columbian Americas. After the collapse of Teotihuacan around 600 AD, competition ensued between several important political centers in central Mexico such as Cochicalco and Cholula. At this time, during the AP Classic, Nahua peoples began moving south into Mesoamerica from the north and became politically and culturally dominant in central Mexico, as they displaced speakers of Otomanguine languages. During the early post-classic, central Mexico was dominated by the Toltec culture, Oaxaca by the Mistec, and the lowland Maya area had important centers at Chichen Itza and Mayapan. Toward the end of the post-classic period, the Mexica established dominance. Alexander von Humboldt originated the modern usage of Aztec as a collective term applied to all the people linked by trade, custom, religion, and language to the Mexica state and Excan Tlatelolian, the Triple Alliance. In 1843, with the publication of the work of William H. Prescott, it was adopted by most of the world including 19th-century Mexican scholars who considered it a way to distinguish present-day Mexicans from pre-conquest Mexicans. This usage has been the subject of debate since the late 20th century. The Aztec Empire was an informal or hegemonic empire because it did not exert supreme authority over the conquered lands, it was satisfied with the payment of tributes from them. 
it was a discontinuous empire because not all dominated territories were connected, for example, the southern peripheral zones of Kokonako were not in direct contact with the center. The hegemonic nature of the Aztec Empire was demonstrated by their restoration of local rulers to their former position after their city-state was conquered. The Aztec did not interfere in local affairs, as long as the tributes were paid. The Aztec of Central Mexico built a tributary empire covering most of Central Mexico. The Aztec were noted for practicing human sacrifice on a large scale. Along with this practice, they avoided killing enemies on the battlefield. Their warring casualty rate was far lower than that of their Spanish counterparts, whose principal objective was immediate slaughter during battle. This distinct Mesoamerican cultural tradition of human sacrifice ended with the Spanish conquest in the 16th century. Over the next centuries Mexican indigenous cultures were gradually subjected to Spanish colonial rule. The Spanish first learned of Mexico during the Juan de Grijalva expedition of 1518. The natives kept repeating, Colua, Colua, and Mexico, Mexico, but we did not know what Colua or Mexico meant, until encountering Montezuma's governor at the mouth of the Rio de los Banderas, 3336 The Spanish conquest of the Aztec Empire began in February 1519 when Hernán Cortés arrived at the port in Veracruz with CA 500 conquistadores. After taking control of that city, he moved on to the Aztec capital. In his search for gold and other riches, Cortés decided to invade and conquer the Aztec Empire. When the Spaniards arrived, the ruler of the Aztec Empire was Moctezuma II, who was later killed. His successor and brother Cuitlahuac took control of the Aztec Empire but was among the first to fall from the first smallpox epidemic in the area a short time later. Unintentionally introduced by Spanish conquerors, among whom smallpox was endemic, the infectious disease ravaged Mesoamerica in the 1520s. It killed more than three million natives as they had no immunity. Other sources, however, mentioned that the death toll of the Aztecs might have reached 15 million although such a high number conflicts with the 350,000 Aztecs who ruled an empire of 5 million or 10 million. Severely weakened, the Aztec Empire was easily defeated by Cortés and his forces on his second return with the help of state of Tlaxcala whose population estimate was 300,000. The native population declined 80-90% by 1,600 to 1, 2.5 million. Any population estimate of pre-Columbian Mexico is bound to be a guess but 8-12 million is often suggested for the area encompassed by the modern nation. Smallpox was a devastating disease, it generally killed Aztecs but not Spaniards who as Europeans had already been exposed to it in their cities for centuries and therefore had developed acquired immunity. The deaths caused by smallpox are believed to have triggered a rapid growth of Christianity in Mexico and the Americas. At first, the Aztecs believed the epidemic was a punishment from an angry god, but they later accepted their fate and no longer resisted the Spanish rule. Many of the surviving Aztecs believed that smallpox could be credited to the superiority of the Christian God, which resulted in their acceptance of Catholicism and yielding to the Spanish rule throughout Mexico. The territory became part of the Spanish Empire under the name of New Spain. Mexico City was systematically rebuilt by Cortés following the fall of Tenochtitlan in 1521. Much of the identity, traditions, and architecture of Mexico developed during the 300-year colonial period. 
The capture of Tenochtitlan and refounding of Mexico City in 1521 was the beginning of a 300-year-long colonial era during which Mexico was known as Nueva España. The Kingdom of New Spain was created from the remnants of the Aztec hegemonic empire. Subsequent enlargements, such as the conquest of the Tarascan state, resulted in the creation of the Viceroyalty of New Spain in 1535. The Viceroyalty at its greatest extent included the territories of modern Mexico, Central America as far south as Costa Rica, and the western United States. The viceregal capital Mexico City also administrated the Spanish West Indies, the Spanish East Indies, and Spanish Florida. The indigenous population stabilized around 1 to 1.5 million individuals in the 17th century from the most commonly accepted 5 to 10 million pre-contact population. The population decline was primarily the result of communicable diseases, particularly smallpox, introduced during the Columbian Exchange. During the 300 years of the colonial era, Mexico received between 400,000 and 500,000 Europeans, between 200,000 and 250,000 Africans and between 40,000 and 120,000 Asians. The 18th century saw a great increase in the percentage of mestizos. Colonial law with Spanish roots was introduced and attached to native customs creating a hierarchy between local jurisdiction and the Spanish crown. Upper administrative offices were closed to native-born people, even those of pure Spanish blood. Administration was based on the racial separation of the population among republics of Spaniards, Amerindians, and Castas autonomous and directly dependent on the king himself. The Council of Indies and the mendicant religious orders, which arrived in Mesoamerica as early as 1524, labored to generate capital for the crown of Spain and convert the Amerindian populations to Catholicism. The 1531, Marian apparitions to St. Juan Diego gave impetus to the evangelization of central Mexico. The Virgin of Guadalupe became a symbol of Criollo patriotism and was used by the insurgents that followed Miguel Hidalgo during the War of Independence. Some crypto-Jewish families emigrated to Mexico to escape the Spanish Inquisition. The rich deposits of silver particularly in Zacatecas and Guanajuato, resulted in silver extraction dominating the economy of New Spain. Taxes on silver production became a major source of income for Spain. Other important industries were the haciendas and mercantile activities in the main cities and ports. Wealth created during the colonial era spurred the development of new Spanish Baroque. As a result of its trade links with Asia, the rest of the Americas, Africa, and Europe and the profound effect of New World silver, Central Mexico was one of the first regions to be incorporated into a globalized economy. Being at the crossroads of trade, people, and cultures, Mexico City has been called the first world city. The Nauta China operated for two and a half centuries and connected New Spain with Asia. Goods were taken from Veracruz to Atlantic ports in the Americas and Spain. Veracruz was also the main port of entry in mainland New Spain for European goods, immigrants, and African slaves. The Camino Real de Tierra Adentro connected Mexico City with the interior of New Spain. Due to the importance of central New Spain, Mexico was the location of the first printing shop, first university, first public park, and first public library in the Americas, amongst other institutions. Important artists of the colonial period, include the writers Juan Ruiz de Alarcón and S.O.R. Juana Inés de la Cruz, painters Cristóbal de Villalpando and Miguel Cabrera, 
and architect Manuel Tolsa. The Academy of San Carlos was the first major school and museum of art in the Americas. Scientist Andres Manuel del Rio Fernandez discovered the element vanadium. Water Supply and Sanitation Demographics Ethnicity and Race Official Censuses Emigration Languages Urban Areas Religion Women Culture Painting Sculpture Architecture The Mexican Literature Visual Arts Cinema Media Music Folk Music Opera Cuisine Sports Health Education Bibliography Spanish forces, sometimes accompanied by native allies, led expeditions to conquer territory or quell rebellions through the colonial era. Notable Amerindian revolts in sporadically populated northern New Spain include the Shishimika War, Tepihuan Revolt, and the Pueblo Revolt. In order to protect Mexico from the attacks of English, French and Dutch pirates and protect the crown's monopoly of revenue, only two ports were open to foreign trade Veracruz on the Atlantic and Acapulco on the Pacific. Among the best-known pirate attacks are the 1,663 sack of Campeche and 1,683 attack on Veracruz. Many Mexican cultural features including tequila, first distilled in the 16th century, charria, mariachi, and Mexican cuisine, a fusion of American and European cuisine, arose during the colonial era. On September 16, 1810, a loyalist revolt against the ruling junta was declared by priest Miguel Hidalgo y Castilla, in the small town of Dolores, Guanajuato. The first insurgent group was formed by Hidalgo, the Spanish viceregal army captain Ignacio Allende, the militia captain Juan Aldama and la corregidora Josefa Ortiz de Dominguez. Hidalgo and some of his soldiers were captured and executed by firing squad in Chihuahua, on July 31, 1811. Following his death, the leadership was assumed by priest José María Morelos, who occupied key southern cities. In 1813 the Congress of Chilpancinga was convened and, on November 6, signed the Solemn Act of the Declaration of Independence of Northern America. Morelos was captured and executed on December 22, 1815. In subsequent years, the insurgency was near collapse, but in 1820 Viceroy Juan Ruiz de Apodaca sent an army under the Criollo General Agustin de Iturbida against the troops of Vicente Guerrero. Instead, Iturbida approached Guerrero to join forces, and on August 24, 1821 representatives of the Spanish Crown and Iturbida signed the Treaty of Córdoba and the Declaration of Independence of the Mexican Empire, which recognized the independence of Mexico under the terms of the Plan of Iguala. Mexico's short recovery after the War of Independence was soon cut short again by the civil wars and institutional instability of the 1850s, which lasted until the government of Porfirio Diaz re-established conditions that paved the way for economic growth. The conflicts that arose from the mid-1850s had a profound effect because they were widespread and made themselves perceptible in the vast rural areas of the countries involved clashes between castes, different ethnic groups and haciendas, and entailed a deepening of the political and ideological divisions between republicans and monarchists. 
Agustin de Iturbide became constitutional emperor of the first Mexican Empire in 1822. A revolt against him in 1823 established the United Mexican States. In 1824, a republican constitution was drafted and Guadalupe Victoria became the first president of the newly born country. Central America, including Chiapas, left the Union. In 1829 President Guerrero abolished legalized slavery. The first decades of the post-independence period were marked by economic instability, which led to the Pastry War in 1836. There was constant strife between liberals, supporters of a federal form of government, and conservatories, who proposed a hierarchical form of government. During this period, the frontier borderlands to the north became quite isolated from the government in Mexico City, and its monopolistic economic policies caused suffering. With limited trade, the people had difficulty meeting tax payments and resented the central government's actions in collecting customs. Resentment built up from California to Texas. Both the mission system and the presidios had collapsed after the Spanish withdrew from the colony, causing great disruption especially in Alta California and New Mexico. The people in the borderlands had to raise local militias to protect themselves from hostile Native Americans. These areas developed in different directions from the center of the country. Wanting to stabilize and develop the frontier, Mexico encouraged immigration into present-day Texas, as they were unable to persuade people from central Mexico to move into those areas. They allowed for religious freedom for the new settlers, who were primarily Protestant English speakers from the United States. Within several years, the Anglos far outnumbered the Tejano in the area. Itinerant traders traveled through the area working by free market principles. The Tejano grew more separate from the government and due to its neglect, many supported the idea of independence and joined movements to that end, collaborating with the English-speaking Americans. General Antonio López de Santa Anna, a centralist and two-time dictator, approved the Siete Leyes in 1836 a radical amendment that institutionalized the centralized form of government. When he suspended the 1824 constitution, civil war spread across the country. Three new governments declared independence, the Republic of Texas, the Republic of the Rio Grande and the Republic of Yucatan. The 1846 United States annexation of the Republic of Texas and subsequent American military incursion into territory that was part of Coahuila instigated the Mexican-American War. The war was settled in 1848 via the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. Mexico was forced to give up more than one-third of its land to the U.S., including Alta California. Santa Fe de Nuevo Mexico and the territory claimed by Texas. A much smaller transfer of territory in what is today southern Arizona and southwestern New Mexico known as the Gadsden Purchase occurred in 1854. The Caste War of Yucatan, the Maya Uprising that began in 1847, was one of the most successful modern Native American revolts. Maya rebels, or Cruzub, maintained relatively independent enclaves in the peninsula until the 1930s. Dissatisfaction with Santa Ana's return to power led to the liberal plan of Ayutla, initiating an era known as La Reforma. The new constitution drafted in 1857 established a secular state, federalism as the form of government, and several freedoms. 
As the conservatories refused to recognize it, the Reform War began in 1858, during which both groups had their own governments. The war ended in 1861 with victory by the Liberals, led by President Benito Juarez, who was an ethnic Zapotec. In the 1860s Mexico was occupied by France, which established the Second Mexican Empire under the rule of the Habsburg Archduke Ferdinand Maximilian of Austria with support from the Roman Catholic clergy and the conservatories. The latter switched sides and joined the Liberals. Maximilian surrendered, was tried on June 14, 1867, and was executed a few days later on June 19 in Querétaro. Porfirio Díaz, a Republican general during the French intervention, was elected the 29th president in 1876. The 1880 election was won by Manuel González Flores. Díaz was re-elected in 1884 and ruled until 1911. The period, known as the Porfiriato, was characterized by economic stability and growth, significant foreign investment and influence, investments in the arts and sciences and an expansion of the railroad network and telecommunications. The period was concurrent with the Gilded Age in the U.S. and Belle Epoque in France and was also marked by economic inequality and political repression. Diaz ruled with a group of confidants that became known as the Cientificos. The most influential Cientifico was Secretary of Finance José Yves Limentour. The Porfirian regime was influenced by positivism. They rejected theology and idealism in favor of scientific methods being applied towards national development. Various iconic buildings and monuments were initiated by Diaz, including the Palacio de Bellas Artes, Palacio de Correos de Mexico, Monumento a la Independencia and the Palacio Legislativo. President Diaz announced in 1908 that he would retire in 1911, resulting in the development of new coalitions. But then he ran for re-election anyway and in a show of U.S. support, Diaz and William Howard Taft planned a summit in El Paso, Texas, and Ciudad Juarez, Mexico, for October 16, 1909 an historic first meeting between a Mexican and a U.S. president and also the first time an American president would cross the border into Mexico. Both sides agreed that the disputed Chamizal Strip connecting El Paso to Ciudad Juarez would be considered neutral territory with no flags present during the summit, but the meeting focused attention on this territory and resulted in assassination threats and other serious security concerns. On the day of the summit, Frederick Russell Burnham, the celebrated scout, and Private C.R. Moore, a Texas Ranger, discovered a man holding a concealed palm pistol standing at the El Paso Chamber of Commerce building along the procession route, and they disarmed the assassin within only a few feet of Diaz and Taft. Both presidents were unharmed and the summit was held. Diaz was re-elected in 1910, but alleged electoral fraud forced him into exile in France and sparked the 1910 Mexican Revolution, initially led by Francisco I. Madero. Madero was elected president but overthrown and murdered in a coup d'état two years later directed by conservative general Victoriano Huerta. That event reignited the civil war involving figures such as Francisco Villa and Emiliano Zapata, who formed their own forces. A third force, the Constitutional Army led by Venustiano Carranza managed to bring an end to the war, and radically amended the 1857 Constitution to include many of the social premises and demands of the revolutionaries into what was eventually called the 1917 Constitution. 
It is estimated that the war killed 900,000 of the 1910 population of 15 million. Assassinated in 1920, Carranza was succeeded by another revolutionary hero, Alvaro Obregón, who in turn was succeeded by Plutarco Elias Calles. Obregón was re-elected in 1928 but assassinated before he could assume power. Although this period is usually referred to as the Mexican Revolution, it might also be termed a civil war since President Diaz narrowly escaped assassination and Presidents Francisco I. Madero, Venustiano Carranza, Alvaro Obregón, and former revolutionary leaders Emiliano Zapata and Pancho Villa all were assassinated during this period. In 1929, Calles founded the National Revolutionary Party, later renamed the Institutional Revolutionary Party, and started a period known as the Maximato, which ended with the election of Lazaro Cardenas, who implemented many economic and social reforms. This included the Mexican oil expropriation in March 1938, which nationalized the U.S. and Anglo. Dutch oil company known as the Mexican Eagle Petroleum Company. This movement would result in the creation of the state-owned Mexican oil company known as Pemex. This sparked a diplomatic crisis with the countries whose citizens had lost businesses by Cardenas' radical measure, but since then the company has played an important role in the economic development of Mexico. Between 1940 and 1980, Mexico remained a poor country but experienced substantial economic growth that some historians call the Mexican miracle. Although the economy continued to flourish for some, social inequality remained a factor of discontent. Moreover, the PRI rule became increasingly authoritarian and at times oppressive in what is now referred to as Mexico's Dirty War which claimed the life of around 300 protesters based on conservative estimates and as many as 800 protesters. Electoral reforms and high oil prices followed the administration of Luis H. Avaria. Mismanagement of these revenues led to inflation and exacerbated the 1982 crisis. That year, oil prices plunged, interest rates soared, and the government defaulted on its debt. President Miguel de la Madrid resorted to currency devaluations which in turn sparked inflation. In the 1980s the first cracks emerged in PRI's monopolistic position. In Baja California, Ernesto Rufo Appel was elected as governor. In 1988, alleged electoral fraud prevented the leftist candidate Cuauhtémoc Cárdenas from winning the national presidential elections, giving Carlos Salinas de Gortari the presidency and leading to massive protests in Mexico City. Salinas embarked on a program of neoliberal reforms which fixed the exchange rate, controlled inflation, and culminated with the signing of the North American Free Trade Agreement, which came into effect on January 1, 1994. The same day, the Zapatista Army of National Liberation started a two-week-long armed rebellion against the federal government and has continued as a non-violent opposition movement against neoliberalism and globalization. In 1994, Salinas was succeeded by Ernesto Zedillo, followed by the Mexican peso crisis and a $50 billion IMF bailout. Major macroeconomic reforms were started by President Zedillo and the economy rapidly recovered and growth peaked at almost 7% by the end of 1999. In 2000, after 71 years, the PRI lost a presidential election to Vicente Fox of the opposition National Action Party. In the 2006 presidential election, Felipe Calderón from the PAN was declared the winner with a very narrow margin over leftist politician Andres Manuel López Obrador of the Party of the Democratic Revolution. López Obrador, 
however, contested the election and pledged to create an alternative government. After 12 years, in 2012, the PRI won the presidency again with the election of Enrique Pina Nieto, the governor of the state of Mexico from 2005-2011. However, he won with only a plurality of about 38 percent, and did not have a legislative majority. Mexico is located between latitudes 14 degrees and 33 degrees north, and longitudes 86 degrees and 119 degrees west in the southern portion of North America. Almost all of Mexico lies in the North American plate, with small parts of the Baja California Peninsula on the Pacific and Cocos plates. Geophysically, some geographers include the territory east of the Isthmus of Tehuantepec within Central America. Geopolitically, however, Mexico is entirely considered part of North America, along with Canada and the United States. Mexico's total area is 1,972,550 km2, making it the world's 14th largest country by total area, and includes approximately 6,000 km2 of islands in the Pacific Ocean, Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean, and Gulf of California. From its farthest land points, Mexico is a little over 2,000 miles in length. On its north, Mexico shares a 3,141 km border with the United States. The meandering Rio Bravo del Norte defines the border from Ciudad Juarez east to the Gulf of Mexico. A series of natural and artificial markers delineate the United States-Mexican border west from Ciudad Juarez to the Pacific Ocean. Donald Trump made the construction of a border wall an element of his 2016 presidential campaign. On its south, Mexico shares an 871 km border with Guatemala and a 251 km border with Belize. Mexico is crossed from north to south by two mountain ranges known as Sierra Madre Oriental and Sierra Madre Occidental, which are the extension of the Rocky Mountains from northern North America. From east to west at the center, the country is crossed by the Trans-Mexican Volcanic Belt also known as the Sierra Nevada. A fourth mountain range, the Sierra Madre del Sur, runs from Michoacan to Oaxaca. As such, the majority of the Mexican central and northern territories are located at high altitudes, and the highest elevations are found at the Trans-Mexican Volcanic Belt, Pico de Orizaba, Popocatapetl, and Iztacahuatl and the Nevado de Toluca. Three major urban agglomerations are located in the valleys between these four elevations, Toluca, Greater Mexico City and Puebla. The Tropic of Cancer effectively divides the country into temperate and tropical zones. Land north of the 24th parallel experiences cooler temperatures during the winter months. South of the 24th parallel, temperatures are fairly constant year-round and vary solely as a function of elevation. This gives Mexico one of the world's most diverse weather systems. Areas south of the 24th parallel with elevations up to 1000 M, have a yearly median temperature between 24 to 28 degrees Celsius. Temperatures here remain high throughout the year, with only a 5 degrees Celsius difference between winter and summer median temperatures. Both Mexican coasts, except for the south coast of the Bay of Campeche and northern Baja, are also vulnerable to serious hurricanes during the summer and fall. Although low-lying areas north of the 24th parallel are hot and humid during the summer, they generally have lower yearly temperature averages because of more moderate conditions during the winter. 
Many large cities in Mexico are located in the Valley of Mexico or in adjacent valleys with altitudes generally above 2000 m. This gives them a year-round temperate climate with yearly temperature averages and cool nighttime temperatures throughout the year. Many parts of Mexico, particularly the north, have a dry climate with sporadic rainfall while parts of the tropical lowlands in the south average more than 2,000 mm of annual precipitation. For example, many cities in the north like Monterrey, Hermosillo and Mexicali experience temperatures of 40 degrees Celsius or more in summer. In the Sonoran Desert temperatures reach 50 degrees Celsius or more. In 2012, Mexico passed a comprehensive climate change bill, a first in the developing world, that has set a goal for the country to generate 35% of its energy from clean energy sources by 2024, and to cut emissions by 50% by 2050, from the level found in 2000. During the 2016 North American Leaders' Summit, the target of 50% of electricity generated from renewable sources by 2025 was announced. Lacandana Jungle, Tropical Rainforest Climate Lago de Camcuero, Humid Subtropical Climate Gran Desierto de Altar, Arid Climate Lagunas de Zempala, Oceanic Climate Nevado de Toluca, Alpine Tundra Sierra de Juarez, Boreal Forest Chantalpa, Tropical Monsoon Climate Llanos Biosphere Reserve, Semi-Arid Climate Valle de Guadalupe, Mediterranean Climate Catavina, Baja California, Desert Mulage Baja California Sur, Oasis Mexico ranks fourth in the world in biodiversity and is one of the 17 megadiverse countries. With over 200,000 different species, Mexico is home of 10-12% of the world's biodiversity. Mexico ranks first in biodiversity in reptiles with 707 known species, second in mammals with 438 species, fourth in amphibians with 290 species, and fourth in flora, with 26,000 different species. Mexico is also considered the second country in the world in ecosystems and fourth in overall species. Approximately 2,500 species are protected by Mexican legislations. In 2002, Mexico had the second fastest rate of deforestation in the world, second only to Brazil. The government has taken another initiative in the late 1990s to broaden the people's knowledge, interest and use of the country's esteemed biodiversity, through the Comision Nacional para el Conocimiento y Uso de la Biodiversidad. In Mexico, 170,000 square kilometers are considered protected natural areas. These include 34 biosphere reserves, 67 national parks for natural monuments, 26 areas of protected flora and fauna, 4 areas for natural resource protection and 17 sanctuaries. The discovery of the Americas brought to the rest of the world many widely used food crops and edible plants. Some of Mexico's native culinary ingredients include, chocolate, avocado, tomato, maize, vanilla, guava, chayote, epizote, camote, chicama, nopal, zucchini, tejucote, hutlacache, sapote, Mami sapote, many varieties of beans, and an even greater variety of chilies, such as the habanero and the jalapeno. Most of these names come from indigenous languages like Nahuatl. 
Because of its high biodiversity Mexico has also been a frequent site of bioprospecting by international research bodies. The first highly successful instance being the discovery in 1947 of the tuber Barbasco which has a high content of diosgenin, revolutionizing the production of synthetic hormones in the 1950s and 1960s and eventually leading to the invention of combined oral contraceptive pills. The United Mexican States are a federation whose government is representative, democratic and republican based on a presidential system according to the 1917 Constitution. The Constitution establishes three levels of government, the federal union, the state governments and the municipal governments. According to the Constitution, all constituent states of the Federation must have a republican form of government composed of three branches, the executive, represented by a governor and an appointed cabinet, the legislative branch constituted by a unicameral Congress and the judiciary, which will include a state Supreme Court of Justice. They also have their own civil and judicial codes. The federal legislature is the bicameral Congress of the Union, composed of the Senate of the Republic and the Chamber of Deputies. The Congress makes federal law, declares war, imposes taxes, approves the national budget and international treaties, and ratifies diplomatic appointments. The federal Congress, as well as the state legislatures, are elected by a system of parallel voting that includes plurality and proportional representation. The Chamber of Deputies has 500 deputies. Of these, 300 are elected by plurality vote in single-member districts and 200 are elected by proportional representation with closed party lists for which the country is divided into five electoral constituencies. The Senate is made up of 128 senators. Of these, 64 senators are elected by plurality vote in pairs, 32 senators are the first minority or first runner-up and 32 are elected by proportional representation from national closed party lists. The executive is the President of the United Mexican States, who is the head of state and government, as well as the Commander-in-Chief of the Mexican military forces. The President also appoints the Cabinet and other officers. The President is responsible for executing and enforcing the law and has the power to veto bills. The highest organ of the judicial branch of government is the Supreme Court of Justice, the National Supreme Court, which has 11 judges appointed by the President and approved by the Senate. The Supreme Court of Justice interprets laws and judges cases of federal competency. Other institutions of the judiciary are the Federal Electoral Tribunal, Collegiate, Unitary and District Tribunals, and the Council of the Federal Judiciary. Three parties have historically been the dominant parties in Mexican politics, the National Action Party, a conservative party founded in 1939 and belonging to the Christian Democrat Organization of America, the Institutional Revolutionary Party a center-left party and member of Socialist International that was founded in 1929 to unite all the factions of the Mexican Revolution and held an almost hegemonic power in Mexican politics since then, the Party of the Democratic Revolution, a left-wing party, founded in 1989 as the successor of the Coalition of Socialists and Liberal Parties. Public security is enacted at the three levels of government, each of which has different prerogatives and responsibilities. Local and state police departments are primarily in charge of law enforcement, whereas the Mexican federal police are in charge of specialized duties. All levels report to the Secretaria de Seguridad Pública. 
The General Attorney's Office is the executive power S agency in charge of investigating and prosecuting crimes at the federal level, mainly those related to drug and arms trafficking, espionage, and bank robberies. The PGR operates the Federal Ministerial Police and Investigative and Preventive Agency. While the government generally respects the human rights of its citizens, serious abuses of power have been reported in security operations in the southern part of the country and in indigenous communities and poor urban neighborhoods. The National Human Rights Commission has had little impact in reversing this trend, engaging mostly in documentation but failing to use its powers to issue public condemnations to the officials who ignore its recommendations. By law, all defendants have the rights that assure them fair trials and humane treatment, however, the system is overburdened and overwhelmed with several problems. Despite the efforts of the authorities to fight crime and fraud, most Mexicans have low confidence in the police or the judicial system, and therefore, few crimes are actually reported by the citizens. The Global Integrity Index which measures the existence and effectiveness of national anti-corruption mechanisms rated Mexico 31st behind Kenya, Thailand, and Russia. In 2008, President Calderon proposed a major reform of the judicial system, which was approved by the Congress of the Union, which included oral trials, the presumption of innocence for defendants, the authority of local police to investigate crime until then a prerogative of special police units and several other changes intended to speed up trials. Drug cartels are a major concern in Mexico. Mexico's drug war has left over 60,000 dead and perhaps another 20,000 missing. The Mexican drug cartels have as many as 100,000 members. Mexico's National Geography and Statistics Institute estimated that in 2014, one out of five Mexicans was victim of crime in some form. President Felipe Calderón made abating organized crime one of the top priorities of his administration by deploying military personnel to cities where drug cartels operate. This move was criticized by the opposition parties and the National Human Rights Commission for escalating the violence, but its effects have been positively evaluated by the U.S. State Department's Bureau for International Narcotics and Law Enforcement Affairs as having obtained unprecedented results with many important successes. Since President Felipe Calderon launched a crackdown against cartels in 2006, more than 28,000 alleged criminals have been killed. Of the total drug-related violence 4% are innocent people, mostly bypassers and people trapped in between shootings, 90% accounts for criminals and 6% for military personnel and police officers. In October 2007, President Calderon and U.S. President George W. Bush announced the Merida Initiative, a plan of law enforcement cooperation between the two countries. More than 100 journalists and media workers have been killed or disappeared since 2000, and most of these crimes remained unsolved, improperly investigated, and with few perpetrators arrested and convicted. The foreign relations of Mexico are directed by the President of Mexico and managed through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The principles of the foreign policy are constitutionally recognized in the Article 89, Section 10, which include, respect for international law and legal equality of states, their sovereignty and independence, non-intervention in the domestic affairs of other countries, peaceful resolution of conflicts, and promotion of collective security through active participation in international organizations. Since the 1930s, the Estrada Doctrine has served as a crucial complement to these principles. Mexico is one of the founding members of several international organizations, 
most notably the United Nations, the Organization of American States, the Organization of Ibero-American States, the OPANEL, and the Rio Group. In 2008, Mexico contributed over $40 million to the United Nations regular budget. In addition, it was the only Latin American member of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development since it joined in 1994 until Chile gained full membership in 2010. Mexico is considered a regional power hence its presence in major economic groups such as the G8 plus 5 and the G20. In addition, since the 1990s Mexico has sought a reform of the United Nations Security Council and its working methods with the support of Canada, Italy, Pakistan, and other nine countries, which form a group informally called the Coffee Club. After the War of Independence, the relations of Mexico were focused primarily on the United States, its northern neighbor, largest trading partner, and the most powerful actor in hemispheric and world affairs. Mexico supported the Cuban government since its establishment in the early 1960s, the Sandinist Revolution in Nicaragua during the late 1970s, and leftist revolutionary groups in El Salvador during the 1980s. Felipe Calderón's administration put a greater emphasis on relations with Latin America and the Caribbean. The Mexican Armed Forces have two branches, the Mexican Army, and the Mexican Navy. The Mexican Armed Forces maintain significant infrastructure, including facilities for design, research, and testing of weapons, vehicles, aircraft, naval vessels, defense systems and electronics, military industry manufacturing centers for building such systems, and advanced naval dockyards that build heavy military vessels and advanced missile technologies. In recent years, Mexico has improved its training techniques, military command, and information structures and has taken steps to becoming more self-reliant in supplying its military by designing as well as manufacturing its own arms, missiles, aircraft, vehicles, heavy weaponry, electronics, defense systems, armor, heavy military industrial equipment and heavy naval vessels. Since the 1990s, when the military escalated its role in the war on drugs, increasing importance has been placed on acquiring airborne surveillance platforms, aircraft, helicopters, digital warfighting technologies, urban warfare equipment and rapid troop transport. Mexico has the capabilities to manufacture nuclear weapons, but abandoned this possibility with the Treaty of Tlatlalco in 1968 and pledged to only use its nuclear technology for peaceful purposes. In 1970, Mexico's National Institute for Nuclear Research successfully refined weapons-grade uranium which is used in the manufacture of nuclear weapons but in April 2010, Mexico agreed to turn over its weapons-grade uranium to the United States. Historically, Mexico has remained neutral in international conflicts, with the exception of World War II. However, in recent years some political parties have proposed an amendment of the Constitution in order to allow the Mexican Army, Air Force, or Navy to collaborate with the United Nations in peacekeeping missions, or to provide military help to countries that officially ask for it. The United Mexican States are a federation of 31 free and sovereign states, which form a union that exercises a degree of jurisdiction over Mexico City and other territories. Each state has its own constitution, congress, and a judiciary, and its citizens elect by direct voting a governor for a six-year term, and representatives to their respective unicameral state congresses for three-year terms. 
Mexico City is a special political division that belongs to the Federation as a whole and not to a particular state. Formerly known as the Federal District, its autonomy was previously limited relative to that of the states. It dropped this designation in 2016 and is in the process of achieving greater political autonomy by becoming a federal entity with its own constitution and Congress. The states are divided into municipalities, the smallest administrative political entity in the country, governed by a mayor or municipal president, elected by its residents by plurality. Mexico has the 15th largest nominal GDP and the 11th largest by purchasing power parity. GDP annual average growth for the period of 1995-2002 was 5.1%. Mexico's gross domestic product in purchasing power parity was estimated at US$2.2602 trillion in 2015 and $1.3673 trillion in nominal exchange rates. Mexico's GDP in PPP per capita was US $18,714.05. The World Bank reported in 2009 that the country's gross national income in market exchange rates was the second highest in Latin America after Brazil at US$1,830.392 billion, which lead to the highest income per capita in the region at $15,311. Mexico is now firmly established as an upper-middle income country. After the slowdown of 2001 the country has recovered and has grown 4.2, 3.0 and 4.8% in 2004, 2005 and 2006, even though it is considered to be well below Mexico's potential growth. Furthermore, after the 2008-2009 recession, the economy grew an average of 3.32% per year from 2010 to 2014. From the late 1990s onwards, the majority of the population has been part of the growing middle class. But according to Mexico's National Council for the Evaluation of Social Development Policy from 2006 to 2010 the portion of the population who lives in poverty rose from 19% to 46%. However, rather than Mexico's economy crashing, International economists attribute the huge increase in the percentage of population living below the country's poverty line to the Coneval changing the standards used to define it, pointing out that the percentage of people living in poverty according Mexico's national poverty line is around 40 times higher than the one reported by the World Bank's international poverty line, with the difference between the two being the biggest in the world. It is pondered then if it wouldn't be better for countries in the situation of Mexico to adopt more internationalized standards to measure poverty so the numbers obtained could be used to make accurate international comparisons. According to the OECD's own poverty line 21.5% of the Mexico's population lives in situation of poverty. This is also reflected by the fact that infant mortality in Mexico is three times higher than the average among OECD nations, and the literacy levels are in the median range of OECD nations. Nevertheless, according to Goldman Sachs, by 2050 Mexico will have the fifth largest economy in the world. Among the OECD countries, Mexico has the second highest degree of economic disparity between the extremely poor and extremely rich, after Chile although it has been falling over the last decade, being only one of few countries in which this is the case. The bottom 10% in the income hierarchy disposes of 1.36% of the country's resources, whereas the upper 10% dispose of almost 36%.
OECD also notes that Mexico's budgeted expenses for poverty alleviation and social development is only about a third of the OECD average both in absolute and relative numbers. According to a 2008 UN report the average income in a typical urbanized area of Mexico was $26,654 while the average income in rural areas just miles away was only $8,403. Daily minimum wages are set annually being set at $80.04 Mexican pesos in 2017. The electronics industry of Mexico has grown enormously within the last decade. Mexico has the sixth largest electronics industry in the world after China, United States, Japan, South Korea, and Taiwan. Mexico is the second largest exporter of electronics to the United States where it exported $71.4 billion worth of electronics in 2011. The Mexican electronics industry is dominated by the manufacture and OEM design of televisions, displays, computers, mobile phones, circuit boards, semiconductors, electronic appliances, communications equipment and LCD modules. The Mexican electronics industry grew 20% between 2010 and 2011 up from its constant growth rate of 17% between 2003 and 2009. Currently electronics represent 30% of Mexico's exports. Mexico produces the most automobiles of any North American nation. The industry produces technologically complex components and engages in some research and development activities. The big three have been operating in Mexico since the 1930s, while Volkswagen and Nissan built their plants in the 1960s. In Puebla alone, 70 industrial part makers cluster around Volkswagen. In the 2010s expansion of the sector was surging. In 2014 alone, more than $10 billion in investment was committed. In September 2016 Kia Motors opened a $1 billion factory in Nuevo Leon, with Audi also opening an assembling plant in Puebla the same year. BMW, Mercedes and Nissan currently have plants in construction. The domestic car industry is represented by Dina S.A., which has built buses and trucks since 1962 and the new Mastretta company that builds the high-performance Mastretta MXT sports car. In 2006, trade with the United States and Canada accounted for almost 50% of Mexico's exports and 45% of its imports. During the first three quarters of 2010, the United States had a $46.0 billion trade deficit with Mexico. In August 2010 Mexico surpassed France to become the ninth largest holder of U.S. debt. The commercial and financial dependence on the U.S. is a cause for concern. The remittances from Mexican citizens working in the United States account for 0.2% of Mexico's GDP which was equal to 20 billion US dollars per year in 2004 and is the 10th largest source of foreign income after oil, industrial exports, manufactured goods, electronics, heavy industry, automobiles, construction, food, banking, and financial services. According to Mexico's central bank, remittances in 2008 amounted to $25 bn. The telecommunications industry is mostly dominated by Telmex, privatized in 1990. By 2006, Telmex had expanded its operations to Colombia, Peru, Chile, Argentina, Brazil, and Uruguay and the United States. Other players in the domestic industry are Axtel and Maxcom. Because of Mexican orography,
providing a landline telephone service at remote mountainous areas is expensive, and the penetration of line phones per capita is low compared to other Latin American countries, at 40%. However, 82% of Mexicans over the age of 14 own a mobile phone. Mobile telephony has the advantage of reaching all areas at a lower cost, and the total number of mobile lines is almost two times that of landlines, with an estimation of 63 million lines. The telecommunication industry is regulated by the government through COFATEL. The Mexican satellite system is domestic and operates 120 Earth stations. There is also extensive microwave radio relay network and considerable use of fiber optic and coaxial cable. Mexican satellites are operated by Satellites Mexicanos, a private company, leader in Latin America and servicing both North and South America. It offers broadcast, telephone, and telecommunication services to 37 countries in the Americas from Canada to Argentina. Through business partnerships Satmex provides high-speed connectivity to ISPs and digital broadcast services. Satmex maintains its own satellite fleet with most of the fleet being designed and built in Mexico. Major players in the broadcasting industry are Televisa, the largest Mexican media company in the Spanish-speaking world, TV Azteca, and Imagen Television. Energy production in Mexico is managed by state-owned companies, the Federal Commission of Electricity and Pemex. Pemex, the public company in charge of exploration, extraction, transportation, and marketing of crude oil and natural gas, as well as the refining and distribution of petroleum products and petrochemicals, is one of the largest companies in the world by revenue, making US$86 billion in sales a year. Mexico is the sixth largest oil producer in the world, with 3.7 million barrels per day. In 1980 oil exports accounted for 61.6% .6 of total exports, by 2000 it was only 7.3%. The largest hydro plant in Mexico is the 2400 MW Manuel Moreno Torres Dam in Chicozan, Chiapas, in the Grijalva River. This is the world's fourth most productive hydroelectric plant. Mexico is the country with the world's third largest solar potential. The country's gross solar potential is estimated at 5 kilowatt hour m2 daily, which corresponds to 50 times national electricity generation. Currently, there is over 1 million square meters of solar thermal panels installed in Mexico, while in 2005, there were 115,000 square meters of solar PV. It is expected that in 2012 there will be 1,8 million square meters of installed solar thermal panels. The project named SCGHCFE1, located in Puerto Libertad, Sonora, northwest of Mexico, will have capacity of 46.8 MW from an array of 187,200 solar panels when complete in 2013. All of the electricity will be sold directly to the CFE and absorbed into the utilities transmission system for distribution throughout their existing network. At an installed capacity of 46.8 MWP, when complete in 2013, the project will be the first utility-scale project of its kind in Mexico and the largest solar project of any kind in Latin America. The National Autonomous University of Mexico was officially established in 1910, and the university became one of the most important institutes of higher learning in Mexico. UNAM provides world-class education in science, medicine, and engineering. Many scientific institutes and new institutes of higher learning, 
such as National Polytechnic Institute, were established during the first half of the 20th century. Most of the new research institutes were created within UNAM. Twelve institutes were integrated into UNAM from 1929 to 1973. In 1959, the Mexican Academy of Sciences was created to coordinate scientific efforts between academics. In 1995, the Mexican chemist Mario J. Molina shared the Nobel Prize in Chemistry with Paul J. Crutzen and F. Sherwood Rowland for their work in atmospheric chemistry, particularly concerning the formation and decomposition of ozone. Molina, an alumnus of UNAM, became the first Mexican citizen to win the Nobel Prize in Science. In recent years, the largest scientific project being developed in Mexico was the construction of the Large Millimeter Telescope, the world's largest and most sensitive single aperture telescope in its frequency range. It was designed to observe regions of space obscured by stellar dust. Mexico has traditionally been among the most visited countries in the world according to the World Tourism Organization and it is the most visited country in the Americas after the United States. The most notable attractions are the Mesoamerican ruins, cultural festivals, colonial cities, nature reserves, and the beach resorts. The nation's wide range of climates, from temperate to tropical, and unique culture a fusion of the European and the Mesoamerican make Mexico an attractive destination. The peak tourism seasons in the country are during December and the midsummer, with brief surges during the week before Easter and spring break, when many of the beach resort sites become popular destinations for college students from the United States. As of 2016, Mexico was the eighth most visited country in the world and had the 14th highest income from tourism in the world which is also the highest in Latin America. The vast majority of tourists come to Mexico from the United States and Canada followed by Europe and Asia. A smaller number also come from other Latin American countries. In the 2017 Travel and Tourism Competitiveness Report, Mexico was ranked 22nd in the world, which was third in the Americas. The coastlines of Mexico harbor many stretches of beaches that are frequented by sunbathers and other visitors. According to national law, the entirety of the coastlines are under federal ownership, that is, all beaches in the country are public. On the Yucatan Peninsula, one of the most popular beach destinations is the resort town of Cancun, especially among university students during spring break. Just offshore is the beach island of Isla Mujeres, and to the east is the Isla Holbox. To the south of Cancun is the coastal strip called Riviera Maya which includes the beach town of Playa del Carmen and the ecological parks of Scarat and Zelha. A day trip to the south of Cancun is the historic port of Tulum. In addition to its beaches, the town of Tulum is notable for its cliffside Mayan ruins. On the Pacific coast is the notable tourist destination of Acapulco. Once the destination for the rich and famous, the beaches have become crowded and the shores are now home to many multi-story hotels and vendors. Acapulco is home to renowned cliff divers, trained divers who leap from the side of a vertical cliff into the surf below. At the southern tip of the Baja California Peninsula is the resort town of Cabo San Lucas, a town noted for its beaches and marlin fishing. Further north along the Sea of Cortez is the Bahia de la Concepcion, another beach town known for its sports fishing. Closer to the United States border is the weekend draw of San Felipe, Baja California. Mexico City Chichen Itza, Quintana Roo Teotihuacan, State of Mexico 
Palenque, Chiapas. Cacaxtla, Tlaxcala. Uxmal, Yucatan. Riviera Maya, Quintana Roo. Cancun, Quintana Roo. Acapulco, Guerrero. Veracruz, Veracruz. Cuernavaca, Morelos. Puebla de Zaragoza, Puebla. Santiago de Querétaro, Querétaro. San Luis Potosí, San Luis Potosí. Chihuahua, Chihuahua. Cenotes. The roadway network in Mexico is extensive and all areas in the country are covered by it. The roadway network in Mexico has an extent of 366,095 kilometers, of which 116,802 kilometers are paved, making it the largest paved roadway network in Latin America. Of these, 10,474 kilometers are multi-lane expressways. 9,544 kilometers are four-lane highways and the rest have six or more lanes. Mexico was one of the first Latin American countries to promote railway development, and the network covers 30,952 kilometers. The Secretary of Communications and Transport of Mexico proposed a high-speed rail link that will transport its passengers from Mexico City to Guadalajara, Jalisco. The train, which will travel at 300 km per hour, will allow passengers to travel from Mexico City to Guadalajara in just two hours. The whole project was projected to cost 240 billion pesos, or about 25 billion US dollars and is being paid for jointly by the Mexican government and the local private sector including the wealthiest man in the world, Mexico's billionaire business tycoon Carlos Slim. The government of the state of Yucatan is also funding the construction of a high-speed line connecting the cities of Cozumel to Merida and Chichen Itza and Cancun. Mexico has 233 airports with paved runways, of these, 35 carry 97% of the passenger traffic. The Mexico City International Airport remains the largest in Latin America and the 44th largest in the world transporting 21 million passengers a year. Among the achievements is a significant increase in access to piped water supply in urban areas as well as in rural areas between 1990 and 2010. Additionally, a strong nationwide increase in access to improved sanitation was observed in the same period. Other achievements include the existence of a functioning national system to finance water and sanitation infrastructure with a National Water Commission as its apex institution, and the existence of a few well-performing utilities such as Aguas y Drenage de Monterrey. The challenges include water scarcity in the northern and central parts of the country, inadequate water service quality, poor technical and commercial efficiency of most utilities, an insufficient share of wastewater receiving treatment, and still inadequate access in rural areas. In addition to ongoing investments to expand access, the government has embarked on a large investment program to improve wastewater treatment. According to estimations made by Mexico's National Geography and Statistics Institute, as of 2017 Mexico has 123.5 million inhabitants making it the most populous Spanish-speaking country in the world. Between 2005 and 2010, the Mexican population grew at an average of 1.70% per year, up from 1.16% per year between 2000 and 2005. Even though Mexico is a very ethnically diverse country, research about ethnicity has largely been a forgotten field, 
in consequence of the post-revolutionary efforts of Mexico's government to unify all non-indigenous Mexicans under a single ethnic identity. As a result, since 1930 the only explicit ethnic classification that has been included in Mexican censuses has been that of indigenous peoples. Even then, across the years the government has used different criteria to count indigenous peoples, with each of them returning considerably different numbers. It is not until very recently that the Mexican government began conducting surveys that considered the Afro-Mexican and Euro-Mexican population that lives in the country. As of 2015, the foreign-born population was 1,007,063. The majority of these individuals were born in the United States and Mexico is home to the largest number of U.S. citizens abroad. After Americans the largest immigrant groups are Guatemalans, Spaniards, and Colombians. Besides the Spanish, large immigrant-descended groups are the French, Germans, Lebanese and Chinese. Mexico is the largest source of immigration to the United States. Some 11.6 million residents of the United States have Mexican citizenship as of 2014. Mexico is ethnically diverse, with people of several ethnicities being united under a single national identity. The core part of Mexican national identity is formed on the basis of a synthesis of cultures, primarily European culture and indigenous cultures, in a process known as mestizage. Mexican politicians and reformers such as José Vasconcelos and Manuel Gamio were instrumental in building a Mexican national identity on the concept of mestizage. The large majority of Mexicans have historically been classified as mestizos. In modern Mexican usage, the term mestizo is primarily a cultural identity rather than the racial identity it was during the colonial era resulting in individuals with varying phenotypes being classified under the same identity, regardless of whether they are of mixed ancestry or not. Since the term carries a variety of different socio-cultural, economic, racial and biological meanings, it was deemed too imprecise to be used for ethnic classification, thus it was abandoned by the government and is not in wide use in Mexican society although it's often used in literature about Mexican social identities and on intellectual circles. In the Yucatan Peninsula the word mestizo has historically had a different meaning, being used to refer to the Maya-speaking populations living in traditional communities, because during the caste war of the late 19th century those Maya who did not join the rebellion were classified as mestizos. In Chiapas the word Ladino is used instead of Mestizo. According to Encyclopedia Britannica racially Mestizo Mexicans make up 50% to 67% of the country's population. The total percentage of Mexico's population who is indigenous varies considerably depending of the criteria used by the government on its censuses it is 5.4% if the ability to speak an indigenous language is used as the criteria to define a person as indigenous, if racial self-identification is used it's 14.9% and if people who considers themselves part indigenous are also included it amounts to 21.5%. Nonetheless all the censuses conclude that the majority of Mexico's indigenous population is concentrated in the southern and southeastern Mexican states, primarily in rural areas. Some indigenous communities have a degree of autonomy under the legislation of Usos y Costumbres, which allows them to regulate some internal issues under customary law. According to the National Commission for the Development of Indigenous Peoples, the states with the greatest proportion of indigenous residents are, Yucatan at 59%, Quintana Roo 39% and Campeche 27%, chiefly Maya, Oaxaca with 48% of the population, 
the most numerous groups being the Mistec and Zapotec peoples, Chiapas at 28%, the majority being Tzeltal and Tzotzil Maya, Hidalgo 24%, the majority being Otomi, Puebla 19%, and Guerrero 17%. Mostly Nahua peoples and the states of San Luis Potosi and Veracruz are both home to a population that is 15% indigenous, mostly from the Totonac, Nahua, and Tinec groups. The absolute numbers of the indigenous population are growing, but at a slower rate than the rest of the population, so that the percentage of indigenous peoples in regards to total population is nonetheless falling. All of the indices of social development for the indigenous population are considerably lower than the national average. In all states indigenous people have higher infant mortality, in some states almost double of the non-indigenous populations. Literacy rates are also much lower, with 27% of indigenous children between 6 and 14 being illiterate compared to a national average of 12%. The indigenous population participate in the workforce longer than the national average, starting earlier and continuing longer. However, 55% of the indigenous population receive less than a minimum salary, compared to 20% for the national average. Many practice subsistence agriculture and receive no salaries. Indigenous people also have less access to health care and a lower quality of housing. Similarly to Mestizo and Indigenous peoples, estimations for the percentage of European descended Mexicans within the Mexican population vary considerably, their numbers range from around 10% 20% according to the Encyclopædia Britannica to as high as 47% according to a nationwide survey conducted by Mexico's government, made with the intent of having a precise outlook of the social and economic inequalities that exist between light-skinned European-looking Mexicans and indigenous or African-looking Mexicans is the first time the Mexican government has conducted an official population study that referenced Mexico's white population in nearly a century, while during the colonial era, most of the European migration into Mexico was Spanish. In the 19th and 20th centuries a substantial number of non-Spanish Europeans immigrated to the country. According to 20th and 21st century academics, large-scale intermixing between European immigrants and native indigenous peoples would produce a mestizo group which would become the overwhelming majority of Mexico's population by the time of the Mexican Revolution. However, according to church registers from the colonial times, the majority of European men married with European women. Said registers also put in question other narratives held by contemporary academics, such as European migrants who arrived to Mexico being almost exclusively men. Nowadays Mexico's northern and western regions have the highest European populations, with the majority of the people not having native admixture or being of predominantly European ancestry. The Afro-Mexican population is an ethnic group made up of descendants of colonial-era slaves and recent immigrants of sub-Saharan African descent. Mexico had an active slave trade during the colonial period and some 200,000 Africans were taken there, primarily in the 17th century. The creation of a national Mexican identity, especially after the Mexican Revolution, emphasized Mexico's indigenous and European past, it passively eliminated the African ancestors and contributions. Most of the African-descended population was absorbed into the surrounding mestizo and indigenous populations through unions among the groups. Evidence of this long history of intermarriage with mestizo and indigenous Mexicans is also expressed in the fact that in the 2015 intercensus, 64.9% of Afro-Mexicans also identified as indigenous. 
It was also reported that 9.3% of Afro-Mexicans speak an indigenous language. The states with the highest self-report of Afro-Mexicans were Guerrero, Oaxaca, and Veracruz. Afro-Mexican culture is strongest in the communities of the Costa Chica of Oaxaca and Costa Chica of Guerrero. During the early 20th century, a substantial number of Arabs began arriving from the crumbling Ottoman Empire. The largest group were the Lebanese and an estimated 400,000 Mexicans have some Lebanese ancestry. Smaller ethnic groups in Mexico include South and East Asians, present since the colonial era. During the colonial era Asians were termed Chino, and arrived as merchants, artisans, and slaves. The largest group were Filipinos and some 200,000 Mexicans can trace Filipino ancestry. Modern Asian immigration began in the late 19th century and at one point in the early 20th century, the Chinese were the second largest immigrant group. The first census in Mexico that included an ethnic classification was the 1793 census. Also known as the Revilla Hijada census, it was Mexico's first national population census. Most of its original data sets have reportedly been lost, thus most of what is known about it nowadays comes from essays and field investigations made by academics who had access to the census data and used it as reference for their works such as Prussian geographer Alexander von Humboldt. While every author gives different estimations for each racial group in the country they don't seem to vary much, with Europeans ranging from 18% to 22% of New Spain's population, mestizos ranging from 21% to 25%, Indians ranging from 51% to 61% and Africans being between 6,000 and 10,000. The estimations given for the total population range from 3,799,561 to 6,122,354. It is concluded then, that across nearly three centuries of colonization, the population growth trends of whites and mestizos were even while the total percentage of the indigenous population decreased at a rate of 13% 17% per century. The authors assert that rather than whites and mestizos having higher birth rates, the reason for the indigenous population's numbers decreasing lies on them suffering of higher mortality rates, due living in remote locations rather than in cities and towns founded by the Spanish colonists or being at war with them. Anthropologist Gonzalo Aguirre Beltran goes beyond said numbers and splits the mestizo group into Euro-mestizos, Indo-mestizos, and Afro-mestizos calculating their numbers at more than 1,700,000 and 600,000 respectively. Independent Aram Mexico eliminated the legal basis of the colonial caste system which led to exclusion of racial classification in the censuses to come. According to Mexico's second census ever which considered race, made right after the Mexican Revolution in 1921, 59% of Mexico's population was mestizo, 29% was indigenous and only 9% was European, with mestizos being the most numerous ethno-racial group in almost all the states. For a long time this census results have been taken as fact with extra-official international publications such as the World Factbook and Encyclopedia Britannica using them as a reference to estimate Mexico's racial composition up to this day. However, in recent time Mexican academics have subjected the census results to scrutiny, claiming that such a drastic alteration in demographic trends in regards to the 1,793 census is not possible and cite, among other statistics the relatively low frequency of marriages between people of different continental ancestries in colonial and early independent Mexico. 
said authors claim that the Mexican society went through a more cultural than biological mestizage process sponsored by the state in its efforts to unify the Mexican population which resulted in the inflation of the percentage of the mestizo Mexican group at the expense of the identity of the other races that exist in Mexico. In recent times the Mexican government has decided to conduct ethnic surveys and censuses again, and has also widened the criteria to classify the ethnicities who were already considered, an example being the indigenous Mexican classification, which was previously reserved to people who lived in indigenous communities and slash or spoke an indigenous language. According to these recent surveys indigenous peoples amount to 21.5% of Mexico's population, Afro-Mexicans are 1.2% of Mexico's population and European Mexicans amount to 47% of Mexico's population. Less numerous groups in Mexico such as Asians and Middle Easterners are also accounted for albeit their numbers do not vary significantly from previous estimations. Out of all the ethnic groups that have recently been surveyed, that of mestizos is notably absent, which may be consequence of the ethnic label's fluid and subjective definition, which complicates a precise calculation as well the tendency that Mexicans have to identify people with static ethnic labels rather than fluid ones. United States is the country where most Mexicans live after Mexico, some of the Mexicans in that country are of indigenous origin because they find better opportunities than in rural areas of Mexico. The Mexican presence in the northern neighbor begins with the annexation of the northern half of the country in 1847. Some of the Mexicans who remained on the other side of the border returned to Mexico but others stayed there, and retained their language and customs. They were joined by a good number of laborers, who went to settle in the United States, some temporarily, through a labor agreement between the governments of Washington and Mexico. The latest economic crises in Mexico have favored emigration to the north, and it is estimated that at the beginning of the 21st century, about 38 million Mexicans or descendants of Mexicans live in the United States. Most of them are concentrated in California, Texas, New Mexico, and Illinois. The second place of destination is Canada, reaching position 62 of foreign communities with 36,575 of Mexicans. The European country with the largest number of Mexicans is Spain. It is the third destination place that in 2009 had 14,399 Mexicans residing mainly for kinship, conjugal and educational reasons, according to the Institute of Mexicans Abroad. The fourth country in the world in having more Mexicans is the neighboring country Guatemala with around 11,481 individuals, mainly for business. Commercial industrial and tourist activities, the fifth place of destination is positioned by Germany and is the second in Europe with the largest number of Mexican residents, in 2005 there were 7,092 Mexicans occupying the rank 45 of foreign communities, in 2008 a total of 8,908 Mexicans were registered and in 2010 it registered 9,225 Mexicans residing in this country, especially in the southern states and large metropolitan areas. Italy is the sixth destination and one of high growth in a short time. Other important communities of Mexicans abroad are those of Brazil, Argentina, United Kingdom, France, Netherlands, and Japan. Recently, the Mexican communities have been increasing in Costa Rica, Panama, Dominican Republic, Chile, Venezuela, and Cuba. The presence of Mexicans in Paraguay and Bolivia is due to the fact that they are mostly Mexican Mennonites who have decided to emigrate in these countries that have a high presence of Mennonite communities throughout Latin America.
The country has the largest Spanish-speaking population in the world with almost a third of all Spanish native speakers. Almost all of the Mexican population speaks Spanish, 99.3% according to the latest census, nonetheless around 5.4% still speaks an indigenous language besides Spanish. The indigenous languages with the most speakers are Nahuatl, spoken by approximately 1.45 million people, Yucatec Maya spoken by some 750,000 people and the Mixtec and Zapotec languages, each spoken by more than 400,000 people. The National Institute of Indigenous Languages in Italy recognizes 68 linguistic groups and some 364 different specific varieties of indigenous languages. Since the promulgation of the Law of Indigenous Linguistic Rights in 2003, these languages have had status as national languages, with equal validity with Spanish in all the areas and contexts in which they are spoken. In addition to the indigenous languages, other minority languages are spoken by immigrant populations, such as the 80,000 German-speaking Mennonites in Mexico and 5,000 speakers of the Chipolo dialect of the Venetian language spoken in Chipolo, Puebla. Arabic is the most commonly spoken foreign language in Mexico. Here are the 20 largest urban areas in Mexico. The 2010 census by the Instituto Nacional de Estadística y Geografía gave Roman Catholicism as the main religion with 83% of the population, while 10% belong to other Christian denominations, including Evangelicals, Pentecostals, other Protestant or Reformed, Jehovah's Witnesses, Seventh-day Adventists, and members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. 172,891 belonged to other, non-Christian religions. 4.7% declared having no religion, 2.7% were unspecified. The 92,924,489 Catholics of Mexico constitute in absolute terms the second largest Catholic community in the world, after Brazil's 47% of them attend church services weekly. The feast day of Our Lady of Guadalupe, the patron saint of Mexico, is celebrated on December 12 and is regarded by many Mexicans as the most important religious holiday of their country. In spite of this, the Mexican state is officially lay secularist since the separation between religious institutions and the political administration of the nation was enshrined in the 1857 and was ratified in the current Constitution of 1917. José María Morelos noted in his writings that there should be no tolerance for any other religion and the Constitution of 1824 declared that the official religion of the Republic would be Catholic, and from the second half of 20th century, began a process of introducing creeds different from the Catholic. The 1920s was marked by a religious conflict known as the Cristura War, in which many peasants encouraged by the clergy clashed with the federal government that had decided to enforce the constitutional laws of 1917. Among the measures contemplated by the Magna Carta were the suppression of the monastic orders and the cancellation of all religious worship. The war ended with an agreement between the parties in conflict by means of which the respective fields of action were defined. Until the middle of the 1990s, the Mexican constitution did not recognize the existence of any religious group. In 1993, a law was enacted whereby the state granted them legal status as religious associations. This fact allowed the re-establishment of diplomatic relations with the Holy See, to which the Mexican state did not recognize as a political entity. According to the figures of Inigi, 
most Mexicans declare themselves Christian and most Catholics. The second Christian group is the Jehovah's Witnesses, which totals more than one million adherents, making the Mexican congregation of this Christian branch the second worldwide. Thirdly find the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, whose members are known as Mormons, 2010 census reported 314,932 members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, though the Church in 2009 claimed to have over 1 million registered members, followed by Church of the La Luz del Mundo, which has its center in La Hermosa Provincia, a colony of Guadalajara. The denominations Pentecostal also have an important presence, especially in the cities of the border and in the indigenous communities. In fact, Pentecostal churches together have more than 1.3 million adherents, which in net numbers place them as the second Christian creed in Mexico. The situation changes when the different Pentecostal denominations are considered as separate entities. Other groups are growing, such as Iglesia Apostolica de la Fe and Cristo Jesus, Mennonites, and Seventh-day Adventist Church. Migratory phenomena have led to the proliferation of different aspects of Christianity, including branches Protestants, Eastern Catholic Churches and Eastern Orthodox Church. According to Jacobo Grinberg Zilberbaum, it is remarkable the survival of magic religious rituals of the old indigenous groups, not only in the current indigenous people but in the mestizos and whites that make up the Mexican rural and urban society. There is often a syncretism between shamanism and the Catholic tradition. Another religion of popular syncretism in Mexico is the Santeria. This is mainly due to the large number of Cubans who settled in the territory after the Cuban Revolution. Although Mexico was also a recipient of black slaves from Africa in the 16th century, the apogee of these cults is relatively new. In certain regions, the profession of a creed other than the Catholic is seen as a threat to community unity. It is argued that the Catholic religion is part of the ethnic identity, and that the Protestants are not willing to participate in the traditional customs and practices. The refusal of the Protestants is because their religious beliefs do not allow them to participate in the cult of images. In extreme cases, tension between Catholics and Protestants has led to the expulsion or even murder of Protestants in several villages. The best known cases are those of San Juan Camula, in Chiapas, and San Nicolas, in Ixmaquilpan, Hidalgo. A similar argument was presented by a committee of anthropologists to request the government of the Republic to expel the Summer Linguistic Institute, in the year 1979, which was accused of promoting the division of indigenous peoples by translating the Bible into vernacular languages and evangelizing in a Protestant creed that threatened the integrity of popular cultures. The Mexican government paid attention to the call of the anthropologists and cancelled the agreement that had held with the SIL. Conflicts have also occurred in other areas of social life. For example, Given that Jehovah's Witnesses are prohibited from surrendering honors to national symbols, children who have been educated in that religion were expelled from public schools. This type of problem can only be solved with the intervention of the National Commission of Human Rights, and not always with favorable results for children. The impact of the Catholic religion in Mexico has also caused a fusion of elements. Beyond churches and religious denominations, a phenomenon persists in Mexico that some anthropologists and sociologists call popular religion, that is, religion as the practice and understanding of the people. In Mexico, the main component is the Catholic religion, to which elements of other beliefs have been added, already of pre-Hispanic, African, or Asian origin. 
In general, popular religiosity is viewed with bad eyes by institutionally structured religions. One of the most exemplary cases of popular religiosity is the cult of holy dead. The Catholic hierarchy insists on describing it as a satanic cult. However, most of the people who profess this cult declare themselves to be Catholic believers, and consider that there is no contradiction between the tributes they offer to the white child and the adoration of God. Other examples are the representations of the Passion of Christ and the celebration of Day of the Dead, which take place within the framework of the Catholic Christian imaginary, but under a very particular reinterpretation of its protagonists. The presence of Jews in Mexico dates back to 1521, when Hernán Cortés conquered the Aztecs, accompanied by several conversos. According to the 2010 census, there are 67,476 Jews in Mexico. Islam in Mexico is practiced mostly by Arab Mexicans, while there is also a small community of Muslims among indigenous Mexicans around the San Cristobal de las Casas area in Chiapas. In the 2010 census 18,185 Mexicans reported belonging to an Eastern religion, a category which includes a tiny Buddhist population. Until the 20th century, Mexico was an overwhelmingly rural country, with rural women's status defined within the context of the family and local community. With urbanization beginning in the 16th century, Following the Spanish conquest of the Aztec Empire, cities have provided economic and social opportunities not possible within rural villages. As of 2014, Mexico has the 16th highest rate of homicides committed against women in the world. A study in 1997 showed that the prevalence of domestic violence against women in Mexican marital relationships varies at between 30 and 60 percent of relationships. The remains of the victims were frequently mutilated. According to a 1997 study, domestic abuse in Mexican culture is embedded in gender and marital relations fostered in Mexican women's dependence on their spouses for subsistence and for self-esteem, sustained by ideologies of romantic love, by family structure and residential arrangements. The perpetrators are often the boyfriend, father-in-law, ex-husbands or husbands but only 1.6% of the murder cases led to an arrest and sentencing. Mexican culture reflects the complexity of the country's history through the blending of indigenous cultures and the culture of Spain, imparted during Spain's 300-year colonization of Mexico. Exogenous cultural elements have been incorporated into Mexican culture as time has passed. The Porphyrian era, in the last quarter of the 19th century and the first decade of the 20th century, was marked by economic progress and peace. After four decades of civil unrest and war, Mexico saw the development of philosophy and the arts, promoted by President Diaz himself. Since that time, as accentuated during the Mexican Revolution, cultural identity has had its foundation in the mestizage, of which the indigenous element is the core. In light of the various ethnicities that formed the Mexican people, José Vasconcelos in his publication La Raza Cosmica defined Mexico to be the melting pot of all races not only biologically but culturally as well. The painting is one of the oldest arts in Mexico. The cave painting in Mexican territory is about 7,500 years old, and has been manifested in the caves of the Baja California Peninsula. Pre-Hispanic Mexico is present in buildings and caves, in Aztec codices, in ceramics, in garments, etc. Examples of this are the Maya mural paintings of Bonampak, or those of Teotihuacan 
those of Cacaxtla and those of Monte Alban. The mural painting had an important flowering during the 16th century, the same in religious constructions as in houses of lineage, such as the case of the convents of Acolman, Actopan, Hujotzingo, Tecamacalco, and Zinacantepec. It is said that they were mainly indigenous painters led by friars who made them. These were also manifested in illustrated manuscripts such as the Matricula de Tributos. For a time it was believed that the first European painter living in New Spain was Rodrigo de Cifuentes, an apocryphal artist who even came to be attributed works such as the Baptism of the Caciques de Tlaxcala, painting of the main altarpiece of the convent of San Francisco in Tlaxcala. Among the native painters was Marcos Aquino. The religiosity of the Novo Hispanos made that the painting was important for the evangelization of the society, the friars realized the graphic skills of the natives, who enriched the Baroque and Mannerist style. The arrival of several European painters and some students from New Spain, such as Juan Correa, Cristobal de Villalpando or Miguel Cabrera, who made the walls and altarpieces the main source of ideological and political expression of artists. The painting of the 19th century had a very marked romantic influence, landscapes and portraits were the greatest expression of this era. Hermann Aguildo Bustos is one of the most appreciated painters of the historiography of Mexican art. They also emphasize in these years Santiago Ribul. José Salomé Pina, Félix Pera, Eugenio Landicio, and his famous disciple, the landscaper José María Velasco Gómez, as well like Julio Rulas. The Mexican painting of the 20th century has achieved world renown with figures such as David Alfaro Sequeras, José Clemente Orozco, Joaquín Clausel, Frida Kahlo, and Diego Rivera generation of idealists who marked the image of modern Mexico in the face of strong social and economic criticism. The Oaxican school quickly gained fame and prestige, diffusion of an ancestral and modern culture, freedom of design is observed in relation to the color and texture of the canvases and murals as a period of transition between the 20th century and the 21st century. Some of the most outstanding painters in the 21st century, Patricia Calvo Guzman. She studied painting in Beijing. Her work, of marked oriental influence, recalls the cut paper figures of Mexico and China, mixing them with a rich chromatic range. Eliseo Garza Aguilar, painter and performer considered among the leading exponents of the provocative and reflective art of the third millennium, in search of a critical response from the spectators, he combines his pictorial work in the performances with theatrical histrionics, Pilar Gaudas, a painter who uses oil on Amati support, with strong influence from Jackson. Pollock and Chinese calligraphy Rafael Torres Correa settles his residence in Mexico in 2001 and joins the contemporary art workshop La Palala in Guadalajara, and performs various plastic and scenographic projects. Throughout history several prominent painters of different nationalities have expressed in their works the face of Mexico. Among the most outstanding we can mention Daniel Thomas Edgerton, Carl Nebel, Thomas Moran, Edouard Manet, and Leonora Carrington. Sculpture in Mexico is strongly manifested in Mesoamerican pre-Columbian cultures, etc., being this generally religious. From the Spanish conquest, civil and religious sculpture is worked by indigenous artists with guidance from teachers of the peninsula, so some pre-Hispanic features are shown. Since the 17th century, white and mestizo sculptors have created works with a marked influence of European classicism. Romanticism tended to break the strict norms and models of classicism, 
as it pursued ideas influenced by realism and nationalism. The religious sculpture was reduced to a sporadic imagery, while the secular sculpture continued in portraits and monumental art of a civic nature. Between 1820 and 1880 the predominant themes were, successively, religious images, biblical scenes, allegories to the symbols of the insurgency movement and scenes and characters of pre cordesian history, and portraits of the old aristocracy, of the nascent bourgeoisie and commanders of the pre-revolution. The transcendent was to introduce civil reasons, the first national types and glimpses of a current of self-expression. During the 20th century, great exponents of Mexican sculpture are Juan Soriano, José Luis Cuevas, Enrique Carbajal, English Leonora Carrington. The presence of the human being in the Mexican territory has left important archaeological findings of great importance for the explanation of the habitat of primitive man and contemporary man. The Mesoamerican civilizations managed to have great stylistic development and proportion on the human and urban scale, the form was evolving from simplicity to aesthetic complexity. In the north of the country the adobe and stone architecture is manifested, the multifamily housing as we can see in Casas Grandes, and the troglodyte dwelling in caves of the Sierra Madre Occidental. Urbanism had a great development in pre-Hispanic cultures, where we can see the magnitude of the cities of Teotihuacan, Talanzicocatitlan, and Mexico Tenochtitlan within the environmentalist urbanism highlight the Mayan cities to be incorporated into the monumentality of its buildings with the thickness of the jungle and complex networks of roads called sacbis. With the arrival of the Spaniards, architectural theories of the Greco-Roman order with Arab influences were introduced. Due to the process of evangelization, when the first monastic temples and monasteries were built, their own models were projected, such as the mendicant monasteries, unique in their type and architecture. The interaction between Spaniards and natives gave rise to artistic styles such as the so-called Tequitqui. Years later the Baroque and Mannerism were imposed in large cathedrals and civil buildings, while rural areas are built haciendas or stately farms with Mozarabic tendencies. In the 19th century the neoclassical movement arose as a response to the objectives of the Republican nation, one of its examples are the Hospicio Cabanas where the strict plastic of the classical orders are represented in their architectural elements, new religious buildings also arise, civilian and military that demonstrate the presence of neoclassicism. Romanticists from a past seen through archaeology show images of medieval Europe, Islamic and pre-Hispanic Mexico in the form of architectural elements in the construction of international exhibition pavilions looking for an identity typical of the national culture. The Art Nouveau, and the Art Deco were styles introduced into the design of the Palacio de Bellas Arts to mark the identity of the Mexican nation with Greek Roman and pre-Hispanic symbols. Modern architecture in Mexico has an important development in the plasticity of form and space. José Villagran García develops a theory of form that sets the pattern of teaching in many schools of architecture in the country within functionalism. The emergence of the new Mexican architecture was born as a formal order of the policies of a nationalist state that sought modernity and the differentiation of other nations. Juan O'Gorman was one of the first environmental architects in Mexico, developing the organic theory, trying to integrate the building with the landscape within the same approaches of Frank Lloyd Wright. In the search for a new architecture that does not resemble the styles of the past, it achieves a joint manifestation with the mural painting and the landscaping. The Jalisco School was a proposal of those socio-political movements that the country demanded. 
Louis Berrigan managed to combine the shape of the space with forms of rural vernacular architecture of Mexico and Mediterranean countries, integrating an impressive color that handles light and shade in different tones and opens a look at the international minimalism. Mexican architecture is a cultural phenomenon born of the ideology of nationalist governments of the 20th century, which was shaping the identity image by its colorful and variegated ornamental elements inherited from ancestral cultures, classical and monumental forms and, subsequently, the incorporation of modernism and cutting-edge international trends. In ethnic and cultural terms, Lo Mexicano corresponds only to everything that is referred to the Aztec culture, therefore, ethnically Mexicans are those who are also known as Nahuas and whose language is Nahuatl. There is a strong discussion to define the Mexican, there are two completely divided aspects, ethnic and cultural, which focuses exclusively on the Mesoamerican people called Mexica people and the legal administrative aspect of the territory called Mexico. In legal terms and in accordance with the Constitution, Mexican is a citizen born within the territory of the United Mexican States or whoever has decided adopt the Mexican citizenship. The Mexican could be what characterizes the being of Mexico and its people, however. It is an ethnic concept that only defines the mestizo identity that had been related for a long time and that is limited with respect to the ethnic diversity of the country. It is an intellectual construction product of the approaches of specialists to the cultural reality of the country. In trying to capture in a single figure the multicultural reality of Mexico, the result of the intellectual analysis has produced a series of stereotypes and truisms about what it is to be a Mexican. This discourse about the Mexican has been used in the political field to legitimize power, and at the same time it is imposed on the population of the country as a fact beyond all doubt. The intellectual construction of the mestizo is in dialogue with the triumph of revolutionary nationalism which was born after the Mexican Revolution. In the reflection on the subject have participated, among others, José Vasconcelos, Samuel Ramos, Emilio Aranga, José Gauss, Leopoldo Zia, Jorge Portilla, Santiago Ramirez, Salvador Pérez Nevarez, Roger Bartra, José Del Val, Arturo Warman, Anaceto Aramoni, Rogelio Diaz Guerrero, Ezequiel Adiodato Chavez La Vista, Moro Rodriguez Estrada and Carlos Chilpa Navaretti. In this specific topic, occupies a privileged place Octavio Paz, author of The Labyrinth of Solitude. Mexican literature has its antecedents in the literatures of the indigenous settlements of Mesoamerica. The most well-known pre-Hispanic poet is Nezahualcoyotl. Modern Mexican literature was influenced by the concepts of the Spanish colonialization of Mesoamerica. Outstanding colonial writers and poets include Juan Ruiz de Alarcón and Juana Inés de la Cruz. Other writers include Alfonso Reyes, José Joaquín Fernández de Lizardi, Ignacio Manuel Altamirano, Carlos Fuentes, Octavio Paz, Renato Laduc, Carlos Monsive, Elena Ponie Tosca, Mariano Osuela, and Juan Rolfo. Bruno Traven wrote Canasta de Cuentos Mexicanos, El Tesoro de la Sierra Madre. Post-revolutionary art in Mexico had its expression in the works of renowned artists such as David Alfaro Sequeras. Federico Caz Garza, Frida Kahlo, Juan O'Gorman, José Clemente Orozco, Diego Rivera, and Rufino Tamayo. Diego Rivera, the most well-known figure of Mexican muralism, painted the man at the crossroads at the Rockefeller Center in New York City, a huge mural that was destroyed the next year because of the inclusion of a portrait of Russian communist leader Lenin. 
Some of Rivera's murals are displayed at the Mexican National Palace and the Palace of Fine Arts. Mesoamerican architecture is mostly noted for its pyramids which are the largest such structures outside of ancient Egypt. Spanish colonial architecture is marked by the contrast between the simple, solid construction demanded by the new environment and the Baroque ornamentation exported from Spain. Mexico, as the center of New Spain has some of the most renowned buildings built in this style. Mexican films from the Golden Age in the 1940s and 1950s are the greatest examples of Latin American cinema, with a huge industry comparable to the Hollywood of those years. Mexican films were exported and exhibited in all of Latin America and Europe. Maria Candelaria by Emilio Fernandez, was one of the first films awarded a Palma d'Or at the Cannes Film Festival in 1946 the first time the event was held after World War II. The famous Spanish-born director Luis Bunuel realized in Mexico between 1947 and 1965 some of his masterpieces like Los Alvidados and Viridiana. Famous actors and actresses from this period include Maria Felix, Pedro Infante, Dolores del Rio, Jorge Negrete, and the comedian Cantinflas. More recently, films such as Como Agua para Chocolate, Kronos, Y2 Mama Tambien, and Pan's Labyrinth have been successful in creating universal stories about contemporary subjects, and were internationally recognized, as in the prestigious Cannes Film Festival. Mexican directors Alejandro González Inarritu, Alfonso Cuarón, Guillermo del Toro, Carlos Carrera, screenwriter Guillermo Arriaga and photographer Emmanuel Lubezki are some of the most known present-day filmmakers. Some Mexican actors have achieved recognition as Hollywood stars. These include Ramon Novaro, Dolores del Rio, Lupe Valles, Gilbert Roland, Anthony Quinn, Katie Girado, Ricardo Montalban, and Salma Hayek. There are three major television companies in Mexico that own the primary networks and broadcast covering all nation, Televisa, TV Azteca, and Imagen Television. Televisa is also the largest producer of Spanish-language content in the world and also the world's largest Spanish-language media network. Media company Grupo Imagen is another national coverage television broadcaster in Mexico that also owns the newspaper Excelsior. Grupo Multimedios is another media conglomerate with Spanish-language broadcasting in Mexico, Spain, and the United States. The telenovelas are very traditional in Mexico and are translated to many languages and seen all over the world with renowned names like Veronica Castro, Lucia Mendez, and Thalia. Mexican society enjoys a vast array of music genres, showing the diversity of Mexican culture. Traditional music includes mariachi, banda, norteño, ranchera, and corridos. On an everyday basis most Mexicans listen to contemporary music such as pop, rock, etc. in both English and Spanish. Mexico has the largest media industry in Latin America producing Mexican artists who are famous in Central and South America and parts of Europe, especially Spain. Some well-known Mexican singers are Thalia, Luis Miguel, Juan Gabriel, Alejandro Fernandez, Yulita Venegas, Gloria Trevi and Paulina Rubio. Mexican singers of traditional music are, Lila Downs, Susana Harp, Jeremar, Gio Menezes and Alejandra Robles. Popular groups are Café Tacuba, Cafeines, Molotov, Panda, and Mana, among others. Since the early years of the 2000s, Mexican rock has seen widespread growth both domestically and internationally. According to the Sistema Nacional de Fomento Musical, 
there are between 120 and 140 youth orchestras affiliated to this federal agency from all federal states. Some states, through their state agencies in charge of culture and the arts ministry or secretary or institute or council of culture, or in some cases the Secretary of Education or the State University sponsor the activities of a professional symphony orchestra or philharmonic orchestra so all citizens can have access to this artistic expression from the field of classical music. Mexico City is the most intense hub of this activity, hosting 12 professional orchestras sponsored by different agencies such as the National Institute of Fine Arts, the Secretary of Culture of the Federal District, the National University, the National Polytechnic Institute, a delegation Politica and private ventures. Mexican music is the result of diverse influences. Very little is known about pre-Hispanic music, although there are many groups that claim that tradition throughout the country. The Danza del Venado of the Yaqui Indians of Sonora and Mayos of Sonora and Sinaloa, is one of the few testimonies of pre-Hispanic music that have persisted to this day, both in its instrumentation and in the lyrics, although there are also records of the sones of the custom of other ethnic groups such as the Tanek of San Luis Potosi and its Danza del Tigrelo or the Huavs of Oaxaca and its sones de la Tortuga, etc. In the pre-Columbian towns, the only stringed instrument used was the percussion arch and the music was more rhythmic and creative of atmospheres than melodic. Also the Eneg, of the family of the chordophones, is used by the Comcock. Among the instruments used were Tepanashli and Huetl, the former being an idiophone instrument and the latter an membranophone instrument the ocarinas and flutes of mud or reed, scrapers of bone or wood, and rattles. After the arrival of the Spaniards, the natives learned European music from the missionaries. Many of the conquest dances that are practiced in the indigenous communities of the country have their origin in that time, as well as certain genres associated with Catholic worship such as Danza de Matachins and Sun de Conc Heroes, among others. In Tabasco, in the city of Tenosique, every year the carnival is celebrated, which many say is the rarest in the world, which begins with the Danza del Poco. The endemic indigenous music was also strongly influenced by the dances of the slaves and the maroon black something that is easier to appreciate in the music of the indigenous communities of Guerrero, Oaxaca, Chiapas, and Tabasco, among others. In 1711 the opera La Partenope was premiered in Mexico City with music by Manuel de Sumaya, master of the cathedral chapel together with Francisco López Capillas and Juan Gutiérrez de Padilla one of the greatest Mexican Baroque composers, the special importance of this opera is that it is the first one composed in North America, this opera gives beginning to the fertile and still little studied history of the Mexican operatic creation that has not been interrupted since then for 300 years. The opera Guatemotzin, by Anaceto Ortega is the first conscious attempt to incorporate native elements to the formal characteristics of the opera. Within the Mexican operatic production of the 19th century stand out the opera Agarante, Rey de la Nubia of Miguel Menezes, premiered during the commemorative festivities for the birthday of the Emperor Maximilian I of Mexico, the operas Piro de Aragon by Leonardo Canales, Kio Far by Felipe Villanueva and above all the operatic production of Melisio Morales, the most important Mexican composer of operas of the 19th century, whose works had great success among the public of Mexico City and which were released in Europe. In the first half of the 20th century they excel in the Mexican operatic creation Julian Carrillo, Sofia Cancino de Cuevas, 
Jose Francisco Vasquez among others, all of them were relegated by the official musical historiography that he only recognized the work of nationalist composers. Since the late 20th century there is a growing interest of composers to write opera. Among the Mexican composers of the beginning of the 21st century who excel with their operas should be mentioned Federico Ibarra Groth, Daniel Caden, Victor Razjadu, Luis Jaime Cortez, Julio Estrada, Gabriela Ortiz among others. In 2005, Mexico presented the candidature of its gastronomy for World Heritage Site of UNESCO being the first occasion in which a country had presented its gastronomic tradition for this purpose. However, in a first instance the result was negative, because the committee did not place the proper emphasis on the importance of corn in Mexican cuisine. Finally, on November 16 of 2010 Mexican gastronomy was recognized as intangible cultural heritage by UNESCO. The origin of the current Mexican cuisine is established during the Spanish colonization, being a mixture of the foods of Spain and the native indigenous. Of foods originated in Mexico is the corn, the pepper vegetables, calabazas, avocados, sweet potato, the turkey, and other fruits and spices. Other indigenous products are many beans. Similarly, some cooking techniques used today are inherited from pre-Hispanic peoples, such as the nixtamalization of corn, the cooking of food in ovens at ground level, grinding in molcajit and matate. With the Spaniards came the pork, beef and chicken meats, peppercorn, sugar, milk and all its derivatives, wheat and rice, citrus fruits, and another constellation of ingredients that are part of the daily diet of Mexicans. From this meeting of millennia old two culinary traditions, were born pasole, mole sauce, Mexican barbecue, and tamale is in its current forms, the chocolate, a large range of breads, tacos, and the broad repertoire of Mexican street foods. Beverages such as atoll, champaradu, milk chocolate, and aguas frescas were born, desserts such as acitron and the full range of crystallized sweets, rompope, cajeta, jericaea, and the wide repertoire of delights created in the convents of nuns in all parts of the country. Some Mexican beverages have crossed their borders and are consumed daily in Central America, United States, Canada, Spain, and Philippines, such as the case of margarita, agua de reyes and tequila. The history of the country and its links with other peoples allowed the incorporation of other cuisines to Mexican cuisine. The Manila Galleon, brought from the Easter range of varied spices and above all, the rice. A good mole poblano is unthinkable without Mexican rice. The Arab cuisine came to Mexico indirectly through the Spanish conquerors. The invasions left their mark on the entire Mexican culture, and cooking is no exception. The taste for ground beef came with the Belgian army of Carlotta of Mexico. The pan de caja was, according to legend, an invention of the American troops who came to Mexico in 1847. The arrival of immigrants from other latitudes throughout the 19th and 20th centuries also participated in the construction of Mexican cuisine. As an example, the Italian cheeses and the polenta that are made today in Chipolo, Puebla, or the Frenches of Orizaba as well as their bread and of Chihuahua. The English miners of state of Hidalgo laid the foundations of paste, a puff pastry stuffed today with the same cheese and potatoes as the green mole of pumpkin seeds. The torta are bocadillos made with tellera bread and, like the tacos, various foods such as ham and cheese, carne al pastor, cochinita pibble, chicken meat.
It is said that they originated during the Reform War when it was necessary to find a way to distribute food among the Mexican troops. There are many beverages typical of Mexican cuisine, aguas frescas, atolls, chocolate, mezcal, tequila, wine, tepach, charanda, tejuano. Mexico City hosted the 19 Olympic Games in 1968, making it the first Latin American city to do so. The country has also hosted the FIFA World Cup twice, in 1970 and 1986. Mexico's most popular sport is association football. It is commonly believed that football was introduced in Mexico by Cornish miners at the end of the 19th century. By 1902 a five-team league had emerged with a strong British influence. Mexico's top clubs are America with 12 championships, Guadalajara with 11, and Toluca with 10. Antonio Carbajal was the first player to appear in five World Cups and Hugo Sanchez was named best CONCACAF player of the 20th century by IFS. The Mexican Professional Baseball League is named the Liga Mexicana de Baseball. While usually not as strong as the United States, the Caribbean countries and Japan, Mexico has nonetheless achieved several international baseball titles. Mexican teams have won the Caribbean Series nine times. Mexico has had several players signed by major league teams, the most famous of them being Dodgers pitcher Fernando Valenzuela. In 2013, Mexico's basketball team won the America's Basketball Championship and qualified for the 2014 Basketball World Cup where it reached the playoffs. Because of these achievements the country earned the hosting rights for the 2015 FIBA Americas Championship. Bullfighting is a popular sport in the country, and almost all large cities have bull rings. Plaza Mexico in Mexico City, is the largest bull ring in the world, which seats 55,000 people. Professional wrestling is a major crowd draw with national promotions such as AAA, CMLL, and others. Mexico is an international power in professional boxing. Vicente Saldivar, Ruben Olivares, Salvador Sanchez, Julio Cesar Chavez, Ricardo Lopez, and Eric Morales are but a few Mexican fighters who have been ranked among the best of all time. Notable Mexican athletes include golfer Lorena Ochoa, who was ranked first in the LPGA World Rankings prior to her retirement, Ana Guevara, former world champion of the 400 meters and Olympic sub-champion in Athens 2004, Fernando Platas, four-time Olympic medal-winning diver, and taekwondo fighter Maria Espinosa, most decorated Mexican female Olympian. Since the early 1990s, Mexico entered a transitional stage in the health of its population and some indicators such as mortality patterns are identical to those found in highly developed countries like Germany or Japan. Mexico's medical infrastructure is highly rated for the most part and is usually excellent in major cities, but rural communities still lack equipment for advanced medical procedures forcing patients in those locations to travel to the closest urban areas to get specialized medical care. Social determinants of health can be used to evaluate the state of health in Mexico. State-funded institutions such as Mexican Social Security Institute and the Institute for Social Security and Services for State Workers play a major role in health and social security. Private health services are also very important and account for 13% of all medical units in the country. Medical training is done mostly at public universities with much specializations done in vocational or internship settings. Some public universities in Mexico, 
such as the University of Guadalajara, have signed agreements with the U.S. to receive and train American students in medicine. Health care costs in private institutions and prescription drugs in Mexico are on average lower than that of its North American economic partners. In 2004, the literacy rate was at 97% for youth under the age of 14 and 91% for people over 15, placing Mexico at the 24th place in the world rank according to UNESCO. The National Autonomous University of Mexico ranks 190th place in the top 200 world university ranking published by the Times Higher Education Supplement in 2009. Private business schools also stand out in international rankings. IPAD and Agade, the business schools of Universidad Panamericana and of Monterrey Institute of Technology and Higher Education respectively were ranked in the top 10 in a survey conducted by the Wall Street Journal among recruiters outside the United States.